But I figured I'd go live because a few of y'all all have seen this before. And I'm bored. So, set all these off. Actually, let's put the wings in first. These are snap ring pliers. If you aren't careful, the snap ring will go bye bye. Hey, Paul Walker. So, I have a certain way of doing this. I put all the dots on one side. And I put the snap rings in the back side of all of them. Then I turn them all around. Once I put the rods on, I'll put the other side on. So the air is always facing towards me. So I can't mess nothing up. This is a really special truck. So, I really have the honor of doing this. Y'all can't hear me. I'm a, I'll slide it a little bit closer. Um, right now I don't have none built up. I got this one to build and I have six end frames up there. But as soon as I got some, I'll let you know. So this is one of our new shops. Um, it's where, sorry guys. It's where all my dad's toys and stuff are going to be, and my brother's going to do powder coating over here. My shop's going to be on the other side, but we're over here right now, so we're going to do good. No, I've never done an in frame on a cab over. We actually try to stay with the newer trucks just because there's so much stuff that goes wrong when you start messing with older trucks. And you run into a lot more issues, and then everybody's like, well, it was working, and I dropped it off. So it's just, it's hard to do that. So you always start out with the pink one. I mean, Justin's Justin. So whatever Justin gets, I got no choice but to help him with it. Um, so if that's what he decides, I'm going to stick with him. Um, ISMs, uh, we do sometimes. I don't like them. I hate messing with the fueling system on them. It's set up just like my pickup truck. And it's, it's really uh, aggravating. Thank y'all. So look, it has top one on it. So you know that that's the first one. Your top's the bottom, which I have them upside down. But the bottom of this is actually the top. So if it's facing right way up, it'll be the top. Next is this one. It's all uh, black, and it says top two on it. Justin, Justin, um, he works. And he don't want to work, I promise you. But he knows his worth, and he's willing to take sacrifices for it.
Um, what kind of truck is ISM in? Yes, I think I think we can actually do that. We don't do it um, just because we don't really have time to do engine swaps. But um, I think that can be done. Man, he likes he likes the motors that he likes. And if I was him, I'd put an LS3. But my dad's got a commit that Camaro that I posted. It's got an LS3 in it, and it it will get it. He actually has a supercharger for it. He ain't had time to put it on yet. And I always make sure the bevel side goes down. Because it couldn't be marked wrong and they'll say top two over here. But you know that the flat side goes up. I mean, Justin's red truck's running, so I don't know if I would swap the engine if it's running that good. Hey, Vernon. Unless they're marked wrong, all the colors will be on the same side too. Way to go. Hey, if any of y'all have any trucks for sale, uh, send me an email because I have a few people looking for a truck. Um, if you're going from my ISM to ISX, uh, I honestly don't know because I don't know what all has to be changed and all that good stuff. Um, I think HD does that. Um, I'm not 100% sure, but I would just call around and see who can actually do that and then find you a motor uh, somewhere or depending on how soon you want it, we're going to have something built up. You got to be careful with these rings, too, because you can't overspread them because they will break. About like when you're squeezing them and putting them in. I don't know how soon yet. I'm trying to get caught up. We got like four trucks up there that I have to build um, before I can start that, which I talked to my dad about maybe doing it on the weekends. And uh, if that happens, then hopefully sooner than later. Um, I don't. I don't have any motors ready to go yet. Um, it's all going to depend on what all you want. So we're going to have different builds. We're going to have a standard rebuild. Hey, Megan. Um, and then we're going to have like a performance one. So we're going to we're going to have different engines, and I don't know the prices yet on them. But um, once we start getting everything up and going, like I said, I don't know how the parts are going to be marked up. Supposedly, there's going to be another markup in June. So we can't really give a price until we're going to see how much it costs to uh, buy parts. Availability is there. Our MHC takes good care of us, so we don't usually have to wait on nothing. And if we do, it's only a few days if somebody around here has it. 
Nobody has it. They work with us the best they can. So I can lower that so I can get the last two. I think they're going to be like for a standard build with a new water pump, oil pump, stuff like that. I think they're going to be running around 30000 So they have gaps right here, but whenever you put the ring squeezer on it, that goes away. So once uh, you squeeze the ring squeezers, there'll be no gap and they'll go down to the uh, liner smooth. But it's, it's kind of scary when you're squeezing them because you're like, oh my gosh, they're going to break because they're so far out. But literally, it just takes two fingers. If they're lined up right, it takes two fingers to close it. And that's how you know you got it right. This one's going together pretty smooth. Got the front cover on, rear housing, cranks in, everything's good. So I'm gonna jack it up and actually put, put it on a stand to do the uh, rods. No, you don't have the once it, so we have a ring squeezer and it squeezes the rings and then we have a tool that we put on top of the liner and you just tap them down in there and once it's in there um it'll expand out like it needs to be and the gap you don't have to worry about it Forty thousand is a lot of money for the end frame i would be interested to see what all they changed what's up josh um what kind of sound is it i know a lot of times that uh if it makes like a loud fueling noise, then um, it could be your fuel pump. I've seen that a lot where the fuel pump starts running and you hear it really loud. Uh, actually, Todd, I am. I'm really looking for somebody to help, somebody that I can trust. I trust our guys, but we can't all be um, engine builders. We got to work on everybody's trucks, so. And yeah, it is called a ring compression. Shadow Frost, I like your truck, man. Kind of got a glimpse of it on the comment. Uh, no, well, it, it is the same, but it's not the same. Um, everything, everything's different, but everything's pretty much runs the same from a big truck to my truck. <laughs> I, I'm trying to get Justin down here to help me build motors. But, uh, Katie says no. Thanks, Jeff. So as y'all can see, all the colors on one side. All right, so yeah, it's, uh, I can't really pronounce your name, but it's, you see, you say, um, it's probably gonna be your fuel pump. It's probably going to be your problem, man. Without looking at it, I don't really know for sure, but if you're in a hard pool and the fuel pump's having to fuse itself, then that's probably what your issue is. So when they did your in frame, when they tore it down, they didn't tell you that your rocker was broke?
Megan, yeah, I gave all my thanks to Justin. Yeah, I told Katie she just needs to come down here with him. Um, no, you have to do rings a certain way. I didn't mean to delete that message, but yes, you have to do the rings a certain way. And right now I'm rebuilding the uh, 20, 2250. I don't know how I just, however these are getting hidden, I don't know, and I'm so sorry. Yeah, I know. I, I'm gonna. I'm actually going to Justin's this weekend, so I'm gonna get him to help me with that. And I don't know how to PM you, but if you send me an email, I'll be glad to help you. All right. So now we're gonna take all these back off. I, I like to put them on there, so I know that I did that one. And I usually just take two off at a time, so I can put the rods down in here. Yeah, he said that uh, if we feel like it, then we'll go mess with it. So maybe he'll go live with it while we're messing with it. Let's put this back up so y'all can see. So you always put the assembly leave. You don't want to dry fit it. I've already checked all these out. Um... So they might, they're good. The play's good. But you always use assembly lube. Do not put it in there dry. And um, I put it on the, the rod. And I put it on this. So you just put a thin layer so when it slides through, it's lubed up and the engine can sit for a while before it run and it will be okay. So I got all these facing forward. So the forward is towards me. On the fractured rod, on the standard rods, it says Brazil. And you always put Brazil facing towards you. But on these are stamped with an arrow pointing forward. I don't know if y'all can see that. So I always make sure that the arrow faces towards me. And I always mark them so that I double check myself. Hey, John Mason, where you been at? We're not doing a tune on this. Um, we're just building it. A guy actually just bought it. And a few weeks after he had it, he had the, a new clutch put in because the clutch went out. And they found something up with his transmission, so he had to replace his transmission. It lasted him about a week. And um, it uh, spun a, a rod bearing. And honestly, guys, this truck is horrible. Um, I mean, whenever I pulled the valve cover off and like looked at the cam and seen how wore out it was, I just I couldn't see it in my heart to be a dealership and sell somebody a truck that has this many issues. A dealership should pull the valve cover off and see what they got going on before they sell a truck. I mean, that's, it's sad that you, you really have to figure things out yourself. I'm actually working with a guy trying to find a truck and, um, he's messaged him and said, Hey, look, can my mechanic come and pull the valve cover off and inspect the fuel pump before I buy the truck to make sure it's all good. And a few of them were like, well, we already sold the truck, but they haven't. They just don't want us in there looking at it. Um, 
um, my dad actually does do transmission work sometimes. John Mason, you working with your dad? So, yeah, if you are looking for a truck, please try your best to get them to pull the valve cover for you and send you a picture of the camshaft and the fuel pump. Just, some, I mean, they, if they're going to sell you the truck, especially the way truck pricing is right now, they should be able to do that. Somebody commented something about a giveaway, but I don't see it. It is kind of easy. There's really not nothing hard about it. I think once we get bigger, we're going to start doing giveaways. Maybe a free overhead adjustment or something. Yeah, Vernon, you better take your wife. Cochran, Georgia's not that far away from here. Um, if, I don't know if y'all can see my email, but it's uh, ISXProblemSolvers at gmail.com. You can send me an uh, email on there. Trucker Pete, I'm glad it's still running good for you. Megan, I think I just made you a moderator, so maybe you can help me out. I think I figured it out. Eighty miles ain't that far. Nice. I'll do some more people, but it's kind of hard right now to do it. But I seen the thing when I was trying to scroll down and see the comments, so I know she'll help me out. I need to meet you whenever we come back down to Justin's again. I'll do a few more of y'all later on. I'm sorry. Her name is right there, and I know her, so... Uh, the red lube is a uh, assembly lube, so they got like this white, like assembly stuff, and I don't like it because when it gets hot, it just melts off. Where this, it don't, it don't just melt off. So it can be hot outside, and it'll be like really drippy, but it'll stay on it. It's uh, isxproblemsolvers at gmail dot com. Well, let us know whenever you're back. I 
I had my brother up here earlier, so he got to help me out a little bit. I wish he would come do this because he could do it. He just don't want to. But I guess it ain't for everybody. Like I said, I mean, even like whenever you go to take this off, it's hard. Thank you, Megan. I believe in this stuff and you can't use too much. Sergeant Major, how's it going? There you go. You should have come up here and worked with me. If I can get Justin down here, I can get these in frames knocked out pretty quick. Tell Katie she can just come down here too. I have a feeling that the boys did not have school. She would do it. You just don't want these going in dry because it'll be a dry fire whenever it cranks up. Luckily, the truck's here for this one. Oh, Carlos, my buddy. Uh, these don't have a round side or a flat side, so they just go on there. And yes, those are common rods. So we usually do, um, say, 8,000 miles for it breaking in and then change your oil. Because um, the semi lube and everything will be in it, which it ain't going to hurt nothing. But we do say that. Thanks for watching from Kentucky. We do um, all 8,000 miles and first overhead at 50,000 miles, just so you're halfway um, into your warranty. And we can inspect everything, make sure everything's still good. If we need to address something, we can address it then so you're still covered. It's just little things we do. And the overhead adjustment is free. We got one more. You're welcome, Jeff. Uh, no, he has not sold his truck. Yeah, I'm glad I was able to find it. So you get back home to them babies.
So whenever you're putting these in, you kind of got to feel to make sure that it's all the way locked in because it can't open and be too far out. So you got to make sure it's all the way in there. So I always just turn it a little bit just to make sure it's in place. They're all done. All my numbers are facing towards me. Um, right now we're booked up for in frame, so we're not taking any in um, unless you're going to be a few months out. Uh, but you can call our office. The number is 678-688-8107. And uh, my sister can help you out with that. But like I said, right now we're not taking any new in. I checked the marks. They're all facing towards me. So everything's good to go. So right now I'm going to go ahead and go back to this uh, engine and get it jacked up. Um, what tool for what? <laughs> no, please do not everybody call her because she, uh, <laughs> she'll be mad at me. I don't know. Just tell her to have a good day or something. She might like that. Um, I wouldn't say 10 days. Uh, if we get pulled off of it, maybe, um, 10 days would be a good advance for us um this is what i use for the ring sweeters i meant the yeah the snap ring and this is what i use for the rings um i use i use mac and i use snap on i got some mac co tools but i usually only use uh mac and snap on Yeah, uh, these shorts are easy. I've actually helped my dad do one, but we just don't have time for it. Yeah, Mac Tools, our guy that sells us Mac Tools, he's really cool, and I have a lot of respect for him. So that's kind of why I stick with the Mac Tools. Um, now, these rod bearings, they're different with their Cummins, but they're not the standard bearings. And so uh, we had to get the crank cut. So these are gonna have different bearings in it. And this is something important. If you're rebuilding somebody's truck, when you drop a bearing down, main or rod, you need to look at every single one of them and inspect it for the number to make sure you go back in with the right number. If not, you could mess up. So this crank was cut down. And so all these are gonna have different bearings. But if somebody did one and cut one down, I've never seen it happen, but it could happen. Then you'll have to use a different bearing for that cylinder or that main cap. So it's kind of important that you make sure you look at all of them and um, make sure that you're using the right bearings for it. Cause if not, it could literally lead to a disaster. So if somebody else, this engine is not gonna have to be touched for a while, but if he ever has to get his uh, rods done or anything, then he has to make sure that he gets the right ones. So hopefully he'll be back here, I'm sure. So we'll, we'll already know and we'll have it notated. But if not, somebody else does it, they could really mess him up. So, like I said, though, before, this is the one that came out, and it's it's really bad. I'll pop this cover off so y'all can see it. I don't know if y'all can see down there. But if y'all can see like that roller right there on the end, it's all chewed up. Most of his are like that. See that number one? That one. He has six broken manifold bolts, four right here. And like I said, guys, he just bought this truck. So y'all need to look for stuff like that for an exhaust leak. You need to look to see if it's leaking in the rear. If it's leaking in the front. Y'all need to look at all that before you purchase a truck. This guy didn't know. Like I said, he just got into it. Um, so he didn't know. 
But we're going to end the live so I can uh, go lift that up and put these in. Get my brother down here so I can teach him how to put them in. I'm going to do a video on it. It'll be, I'll post it tonight so y'all know where we get to. Um, this one's taking a little bit more time because I'm actually having to clean a lot more stuff than usual. I'm having to do more things. I mean, it was literally tore down to the bare block. I'm sure y'all seen it. So, I mean, I'm just excited that we're able to do this for this guy. And it's Friday. So, um, we're going to see how far we can get. You're welcome, my G. And uh, like I said, liners are in. They checked out good. Yeah, well, well, we always have a great weekend with Justin and Katie. I really, um, they're really good people. And I can't have better friends. I can call them about anything, and they're always there. So I'm glad Justin had the opportunity to come build his engine with us two times. Um, the second time was, we, had, we enjoyed our time because we actually knew him and everything. So we'll definitely have a good weekend. And thanks for the safe travels. These gas prices hopefully will be all right going up here. They're getting a little out of the crazy, but I'm just blessed that I can actually afford the gas and be able to go. And we don't have time to do a mechanic school. And uh, there's a lot of people who I have trained and my dad's trained and they're actually, one of them's out on his own. One of them decided to go work for a dealership and he's doing good, but he calls me all the time asking me questions and I love that I can help him out still. But I mean, we build people to go out on their own. We don't want to keep them here forever because we want them to make as much money as possible. So anybody that comes in here, we'd ask them what their goal is. And hopefully all of them say that they want to have their own business because we want to be able to expand. We want our people here to move out of state, open their own shop. That's our goals for everybody that works for us. Um, It'd be cool to just have a circuit where if y'all guys are in certain places and we can call somebody that's actually here that has opened a shop and say, hey, go see them. And uh, so that's what we're working for. And um, we're, we're going to train them up. So if anybody that y'all really don't know much, but you're mechanically inclined, y'all can learn this. I've seen somebody says that they were building car engines, race car engines. You could do it too. You just got to put time into it. And, um, I mean, I've been doing this since, I think I built my first one by myself in 2017 or 16. But, I mean, I haven't been doing it that long, and I'm still young, so there's still more that I have to learn. Um, do I want to learn a different engine? No. I could, but I love this so much, I don't want to change. And these are always need an end frame. Yeah, we're, we're, um, maybe that franchise will be in the near future and, uh, we'll be able to help more. But like I said, we want everybody to succeed. We want truck drivers to be safe out there and in good hands. And, um, we'll just see how it leads us. But for right now, I'm going to stop this and, uh, get all these ready to go in. But I appreciate y'all. For everything y'all have done, thank you for subscribing, and uh, thank you for building this channel up. I hope that it gets even better, and um, we'll see how it goes. But like I said, Justin's the one who told me to do this. He said, you need to start a YouTube channel. You need to post a lot. I try my best to post a lot, but things happen. But uh, So I figured I'd go live now. But thank y'all for watching. Thank you for putting your time into this. Taking time out of your own day to watch. And um, I'll post a video tonight. Bye-bye. Thank you, Lee.